Hello everyone, I'm Clement Pang, co-founder and chief architect of Wavefront, and I'm here to talk to you about alerting. You probably have been sending data into Wavefront, and you probably have been enjoying the visualizations and the various ways that you allow, we allow you to manipulate the data, and you're wondering, I have all this power, but I don't have all the time that could actually be monitoring the data. Now Wavefront helps you with that. We are able to run the time series queries that you have crafted, and we can run it all the time, monitoring all of the time series data that you're sending to us, and give you alerts that you could action on. Now, traditional systems are very much uh, restrictive in the sense that you could only craft alerts that fit a particular behavior paradigm. For example, a threshold alert. Now, you could do very simple alerts in Wavefront today, but you could also use the full power of the Wavefront language. For example, you could do an aggregation, you could do a moving average, you could compare a series against its past behavior, you could compare the behavior of a particular time series against its peers. All of that, as long as you can express in our time series language, you can alert on. So let me give you an example. Here, this is again back to a simple case where there is a threshold for a particular time series. If you're able to express the metric in a time series language, we will be checking that language, that query, every minute to see if there are any deviations. Let's say for this example, it is the number of requests that you're, send, you're seeing in your system. This could be an alert query in and of itself, but what would, it, what would happen is that whenever it is above zero, we would actually consider it to be firing. So you probably want to put a threshold. The most easy way to do that is to actually just say, you know, a comparison operator. What this will do is to tell Wavefront, hey, if the number of requests goes above 100, then trigger the alert. What Wavefront allows you to specify as well is the time that it takes for this alert to be true before it begins to fire. Let's say for this example, you specify 10 minutes. In this particular scenario, you see that now the threshold has been exceeded. But since the historical time that we have to see the alert being violated has 10 minutes, the value needs to be above the threshold for all of this time window before the alert itself would be triggered. So an example here would be if there's another time series that you're reporting and it happens to be violating the condition. So in the last 10 minutes before now, we see that this particular metric is above the threshold. And for that particular time series, Wavefront will trigger an alert. Now, Wavefront is powerful in the sense that it could actually track all the time series that you have expressed in the query and track their alert firing states independently. What that means is you do not have to craft an alert for each of the hosts or each of the service or each of the different dimensions that you're reporting. You simply need to craft a single Wavefront query that allows you to express multiple time series and Wavefront will check the conditions for all of them all the time automatically. So in this particular example, we see that this time series that we have here is firing. And let's assume this alert has never been fired, and so Wavefront will trigger an alert based on the, the, the settings that you have uh, described in the alert. Now, it could be sending an alert email, including the series that, that is uh, found to be offending the, the threshold. It includes an image of the actual time series that are queried in the alert query, as well as additional information, for example, you know, what, when, what that alert name is, and you could include runbook information in, inside it. We also have an, an integration with Slack, so you could actually send uh, your alerts directly to Slack as a message in a, in a particular channel. We also have the ability to send uh, alerts directly to alerting systems such as PagerDuty or VictorOps. Now, if we don't have something that's out of the box for you, you could also use just an HTTP webhook. The webhook needs to be reachable via the internet, and we will send any information that you want uh, crafted in the alert template and have that fire into the HTTP endpoint that you specify. As I said before, Wavefront actually tracks all of the series that, are, that the alert itself um, monitors and independently uh, will notify you when a single series enters or exit the alert. So in this particular example, we see that a particular host, let's uh, use that example, is violating the constraint. So we would basically say, let's say web one is having a problem. It will trigger an email, will trigger a Slack message, or trigger a webhook, or all of them. And let's say the time series that we have here in green 
continues to violate the alert, and it is now time. Uh, it is now 10 minutes, and it has all been violating the, the threshold. The system will detect that host web two is essentially joining the alert. And you could configure Wavefront to say whether new hosts or new time series that are joining the alert will trigger an alert email, a trigger a Slack message, or trigger a webhook. All of that is configurable via alert templates, and you could pick and choose what you want. Now, let's say, for example, that Web1, after a while of in a state of violating the threshold, it comes back down. And we basically would detect that for the last 10 minutes, that's what you have defined in the alert, all of the data points that we observed for that particular series is now no longer in violation of the threshold. We will then suggest that this host is now resolved. And again, you can configure whether you get an email, get a Slack message, or get a webhook when that happens. The entire alert is considered resolved when no time series is violating that constraint. So imagine this time series that we're tracking. The final time series, I'm kind of crossing myself here, also is, is below the threshold. And the final series is no longer firing. So after that, we basically do an all clear. So if it's a PagerDuty uh, call, we resolve the alerts. If it's a Slack message, we will send a message that says that alert is no longer firing anymore. Now, this is just a very simple example that I have where it is a threshold alert. You could imagine you could express an alert, as I said before, where it compares to itself, and it deviates based on a certain percentage. And you could express that as an alert and have that be monitored by Wavefront. We also have a slew of forecasting capabilities, anomaly detection capabilities, uh, statistical aggregations, as well as population percentiles. And all of that can be used in the alert itself to craft the exact alert that you want to capture. Well, I also want to mention that we have um, a very powerful function that allows you to backtest these alerts. And it takes into account both the query that you have as well as the um, trigger window that you have specified. And we'll show you exactly how often an alert would trigger based on historical data. So you could actually craft your alert, test it hypothetically against the existing data, and figure out is it an alert that would, for example, be triggering too often and annoying uh, operation staff. All of that is in Wavefront. It's included with the platform, and you could experience it today by signing up for a trial at wavefront.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm.